All right, so welcome to Adobe XD. Uh, basically, what this meant is to, uh, what this is designed for is to create um, interactive um, uh, mockups that you can use for uh, to create your UI designs for uh, a multitude of applications. Uh, typically, you know, like a, a, a an app uh, web. Um, you can see they have other ones up here. Uh, software, just in general. Um, it's meant to just kind of let you do that layout. Um, it, you won't be able to create anything that's like a, a fully functional app. It's more meant that as a designer, you could lay out how it's going to function, how it's going to run. And then from there, actually export out all of the images and send it to your software developer and be like, hey, this is how it should work. And then they will build all of the, um, the, the engine underneath in order to make it function. Because in order to do like a, a mobile app or even a, a, a website, um, would require a multitude of um, technologies and usually there's like a tech person and an art person so this allows an art person to sort of develop the look the the front end if you will um and then the the developer can can build the technology uh in order to actually make it function the way that you would want all right so first thing you want to do is actually just open up adobe xd voila there it is um and then what we're going to do is we just want to make a new uh, a new project. So there are a couple of options that they have right by default. You can make your own custom size, obviously. They have these, uh, you can see these here. I haven't really ever used these, but these exist. Um, and then there's web. And there are, oops, okay. Let's do file new just so you can see. And then if I click on this, you'll see there's some here. I'm kind of disappointed because they don't have Samsung, which is what I have. Um, they have a, a whole bunch of iPhone. Uh, I'm sure you could just look up the numbers and go from there, but uh, yeah, they just have the iPhone here, and then they have Google Pixel, which I don't know that maybe let. I mean, Samsung is like the most popular, although there are a bunch of different kinds of Samsung. Um, anyway, and they also don't have um, you know iPads and all that stuff too. But you can actually download uh, templates and use those uh, as well, uh, or like I said, just look up the sizes. Just go ahead, and we'll just do the iPhone 12 Max, which is the one I accidentally clicked already, um, just because that's kind of the latest, uh, generally speaking, it's going to be kind of a similar layout. You would just scale it slightly for one direction or the other. Okay, so just click on that. And it's going to give you this by default. So this is uh, basically this is meant to represent the screen. Okay, so you can see, you know, uh, it's generally its proportions, um, which is, you know, useful. Um, and uh, let's see. So uh, yeah, this is what this is. This is basically the viewport. You'll see you have artboards. Um, and each artboard is meant to represent another area of the app. So like you would click on something and then you would go to another page and then you create another artboard for each one of them. OK, uh, that's the idea behind the design here. Um, then uh, over here, if you click on this, you get your menu items. We'll be using a little bit of this. Um, one of the things that I noticed with this program, um, it might be like the other ones, too. But I don't feel like they are like this as much. This one very much when you hit save. Um, it tries to save to the cloud first and foremost. So just be aware of that, which is fine because you have your account and everything, but it's going to try and save to the cloud, which is nice on one hand, uh, but you might need to do the save as local document. Uh, personally, I would do that because I like to have everything on my computer, but just be aware that save and save as by default, they're going to be going uh, over there. So, you know, that's a thing. Um, but this is also where we would import stuff and export stuff. The export isn't super helpful because basically, like I said, what it's going to do is it's just going to export out the images. It's not going to export out something that you can actually open. Um, there might be ways of making that work. We'll explore that later on. Um, but really, even if you were going to make a website, you could design it very quickly here, export all the images and then build, you know, take the images from what you export and utilize those. Um, but we will be doing things like getting these uh, UI kits. Um, uh, so wireframes and these things, basically, they're just like templates. That's how we're going to build most of our stuff. Uh, but that's what that menu does, what you would typically see. Um, the next things are design, prototype and share. We're not going to use share at all because I'm not sending this to anybody. But uh, if you're working on an app, obviously, I could send them a link and then you can even view it on your phone to see how well it's functioning. Right. Um, so it allows you to basically preview it on a phone, um, which is super handy. So that's what this is, um, but we're not really gonna be using that. So design is where we do the actual design. This is for all of the visual aspects of what we see. Um, you'll see that it's sort of limited, but you can actually do quite a bit. It's decently robust, but the visual uh, parts come into play here. Then there's prototype. 
Um, and the prototype is how you basically connect things. So I'll make a button and then it'll have a little arrow and then I'll click and I'll say, when you click on the button, go there. And then I want you, when you do the transition, I want you to do, uh, there's like uh, auto animate and there's different options. Um, basically it handles the interactivity part. Okay. And then when you're all said and done and you're feeling good about it, you can either click on this, which will, um, it will allow you if you hook up a device to it to um, preview it or you hit the play button and it will, it'll bring open this little window and you can click on it and it should interact like if your, your uh, mouse was a, a thumb or a finger. Okay. That's the idea behind that. Um, yeah. So that's what you would typically see. Yada, yada, yada. Now notice that the options get kind of limited when I'm in prototype because you really don't do too much in here other than just the connections. Well, you can do a lot more, but, uh, but if we go to design, you can see we have all of these options now. Okay. So they're basically the select tool works like you would select like other things that you had. So if I draw an object, right, I can click on the canvas itself uh, or the artboard itself, and then I can do stuff to it. If I click on this object, I can do stuff to this object, right? So this is basically the properties panel. I don't know what they call it in here, but that's what it is. It tells you the stuff about what you have selected and you can change them. So if you used other vector programs and interactive applications, uh, that's what they would do. So that's your select tool. Does the typical selecting things that you would expect. Um, then we have a rectangle, uh, an ellipse, and a polygon tool. Um, so you can, you know, draw your, your shapes, then line tool, pen tool, kind of your typical vector tools. You can see there isn't all that much there. Uh, type tool, pretty obvious. You can draw your artboards here. So if you want to have different sized ones, you can do that. Um, after you draw it, you can go ahead and, um, I don't see they have these different ones here. Surface Pro, Samsung. Okay, well, that's better. Uh, I could click on one of these and then it will automatically make the right size. Um, we'll just delete that. Go to the select tool, delete that. Most of the time though, what I'm gonna do is just right click and copy and paste um, the the same one. That way it's always the same, but that's what that's for. Um, zoom tool, we'll just do command plus or minus, or you can hold control and use your scroll wheel. Um, that's fine too. You can middle mouse button or you hold space. Hey, my space bar's working. This literally hasn't worked in like over a year. That's weird. Anyway, uh, it'll allow you to do those sort of things, okay? And the bottom here uh, is sort of where a lot of the control comes into play. So some of you probably already know. Um, this one, what it does is it shows you basically all of the assets that are in your scene. So as you work, you'll have like a saved color palette, and that will be in here. Um, we don't really do too much of the character styles yet, but the uh, components we can do is you can take an object and make it a component. It's basically the same thing as doing a symbol inside of Animate or an instance inside of Unity. It, you can make a, an object and then reuse that object over and over again. You just make it into a component and you can save those components. You can download components uh, and then you can utilize them over and over and over again, give them functionality and things like that. Okay, so that's what the components are. But this is, um, if you're in a video editor, this would be like where you hold all of the stuff that's going to go in there. It doesn't even necessarily mean that it is in there, but anything that is in there is going to also be in here. Okay. This is your layers. So what you'll see is, especially as we do control C and B, you'll see that each artboard has uh, a thing. And when you double click on the artboard, you'll see all of the items inside of that artboard. And then I'll back up, double click on this one. I don't have anything in there, but if I was like, woo, right now you can see that object is in there. So if I double click on this one, yeah, it's, there's nothing in that one. This one has this rectangle. I'll delete it. So it's another way of basically interacting with it. Uh, but that's what that's for. Uh, it's it's your layers panel, right? But it's it's a little more like it's a little more has like a, a hierarchy to it because obviously you have multiple um, panels and such. Okay. And then the bottom one is plugins. Um, we're not going to install any plugins right now. I may or may not get to that. Kind of depends. Uh, basically, it'll just add some functionality. It does what other plugins do. Um, uh, some of it's just like allows you to like put images in real quickly of like just random people or to make like maps and things like that. Uh, just like I said, just to add functionality. The, the idea here is though, regardless is that it's not going to, this is just a visual representation. It's a mock-up of what you're going to make. It's not going to be a final thing. Okay. So that is all the elements uh, that we're basically going to be working with. Um, I would just suggest leaving out the layers and I'm going to hit B for the select tool. I'm just going to delete this because I don't need that. Um, and now we have, uh, so that's a rough overview. I'm just going to leave that like that. And then the next video will actually start um, making stuff.